What's going on you guys? Welcome back. So in the last two videos, I focused mainly on the transmission. In this case, the 6L ADE that I have in my Nova. In episode 14, I talked about making this tool right here. In episode 15, which is the last video, I actually showed me using this tool and I used it uh, with, you know, a bottle pump and I actually pumped the fluid into my tranny. Now the tool, when I made it, was primarily for me to fill the tranny up from the pan and to do my transmission fluid level checks, which I focused on in the last video. But there's still one thing that I need to um, accomplish with the use of this tool and which makes this tool a pain uh, to use. So when I do a fluid change and a, a filter change, as I explained in the last video, you have to remove the, the oil pan in order for you to get the fluid out of the transmission. And that's because the drain plug is not really a drain plug, it's actually a fluid level plug, which is, you know, as you saw when I used this, I pulled the original drain plug out, nothing came out. And that meant that I had to put some fluid into the tranny. Well, when it comes time for me to actually drain the pan and change the fluid, well, the transmission is gonna drop maybe four, four, four quarts of fluid. And you have to put all that fluid back in. And then on top of that, the car has to be running for you to actually do the fluid check. To fill the tranny, okay, I already made it easy by making the tool, but to fill the tranny using this, you have to pump in, not just, you know, a quarter of a quart like I did in the last video, you have to pump in maybe four to six of these into the transmission. And imagine doing it, you know, constantly. And it'll take, you know, hundreds of pumps to go through four quarts, maybe five quarts of fluid. Well, that's a hassle to do that. Just kind of pumping and pumping and pumping. It's tiring. I know because I had to pump in 11 quarts of fluid using that tool when I first installed the tranny when it was bone dry. And I want to do something about it. I've already created the tool, which allows me to fill it up from the bottom. And now I want to create another thing, in which I will show in this video, on how I can eliminate this right here. Now, the idea came from me actually looking at this here that I have. Um, it's basically just one of those chemical um, uh, bottles where you actually pump it, okay? You pump it up and it builds up some air pressure on the inside of the bottle. And then when you press the little trigger, the pressure comes out along with the fluid. Now, as you saw, I pressed the, um, the trigger and air started to come out. Obviously the, the fluid the, uh, bottle was empty. But notice how long that air pressure came out. I'm hoping that the camera picked up the sound. It wasn't very long. So that would mean that even if I was to get a really large one of these to put in maybe, you know, two gallons of fluid into the tranny to fill it up, you still got to go through the hassle of pumping it and then pressing. And when that runs out, pump it and then press it up again. You got to go through that. I wanted to solve that. So in this video, I'm going to show you my idea and hopefully it'll work. And I'm going to take you along as I actually experiment with this idea to create my fluid transfer pump. So here we have the bottle and I just want to give you guys a closer look and an understanding of, of how I came up with this idea. So I open up the bottle and you'll see here, this is the plunger and this here is the valve connected to the plunger. And when I, when I move the valve or when I move the plunger, you'll hear that this valve actually um, disperses some air. So by doing that, I now understand how this bottle works. And basically it's just a pump 
that pumps air into the bottle and builds up some pressure. And then with that pressure, the, the fluid will come out this straw and spray out the sprayer. So now that I have an understanding of that, I now can show you my idea and hopefully this will um, work out and we have a new tool. So I have here two sprayers um, that I got from Walmart. They're fairly cheap. This one's about $8. This one's about $13. Um, and I also got some, some tools. So I got my drill and I got these tire valves. So you can probably see where this is going. Um, got these tire valves and one package will serve for both of these projects. And if you look at the tire valve packaging, you'll see here it says it's for a 0.53 inch rim hole. So I did some research and found out that the, the 2964 drill bit is 0.5, I mean 0.453. So it's less than half inch. And so this drill bit will, will provide me with a perfect size hole for these valves. Okay, so I opened her up and you can see that this is a similar in design. Basically, it's just a plunger and this is the, the valve here. So this is the plunger and here's the valve. And so we're gonna try to you know do the same thing and see if air comes out of this. And sure enough, it does. So this bottle or this sprayer basically does the same thing as this little one. So this is how I got my idea to start um, forming. Basically, I'm gonna take this tire valve and I'm gonna drill a hole uh, right here somewhere on the top to stick this tire valve in using this drill bit. And now this drill bit will create the perfect size hole for this tire valve so that I can ensure that I do not have any leaks when I put this valve in. I want a nice tight fitting. And so after I do that, basically that will eliminate the need for me to actually start doing this. But it will also allow me to continue to have this function um, even though I have the tire valve. Now why? Why did, do I wanna you know, replace or actually put in a tire valve when this serves as a pump? Well, in the beginning of the video, uh, you would have heard me saying that what I didn't like is that I would have to continue pumping to get the air pressure and then eventually that will run out. So my idea is to actually connect an air compressor onto this, provide some air pressure at a constant level so that I can continue to, uh, you know, uh, have the fluid flow out of the nozzle. So when I press the trigger, it's always going to be pumping fluid. And so why choose a sprayer? Well, the sprayer is specifically designed to hold pressure and with the tire valve in place and with this still in place, I can actually use the pump to pump up air into this container and with the tire valve and this air uh, air gun with or tire gauge I can actually see how much pressure this valve actually pumps into this and therefore actually mimic it with the compressor okay so the moment of truth I drilled my hole using my 2964 bit and I went through my arsenal of of nuts and I basically took a nut and found a, found a, uh, a nut that would actually go over this um, fairly nicely and then you know I took this off stuck it in there into the, the bottle and once I had the, the tire valve right through I put on the nut so that it won't fall back in there then I took a hammer the end of the hammer and I just basically slid it over where the nut is so I have some grip and it just basically pulled up and made sure that I had a nice seal so let me show you that right now so you can see there so I provided a nice seal so I don't have to you know, worry about it leaking so let's uh, let's test it out 
Okay, I got the camera set up. I got my tire valve um, pressure gauge right here. So I'm gonna turn it on so you can see there the pressure. And I'm gonna start pumping away. Let's see how much pressure I can build with the original pump from the bottle. Now it's starting to get some resistance. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I think that's that's about good. So it's, it's, it's lowering right now. It's going down a little bit, stabilizing. That's definitely a workout. So got there, 29.6. 29.5 yep there it is 29.4 29.5 is where it stabilizes at so we now know that we can put 30 psi of pressure in this tank so now let's go and let's press the trigger so we definitely have you know some air pressure so there it is so now I'm gonna hook up I'm gonna hook up my uh, my compressor set it up and let's see how this works okay I got the compressor all set up and you can see from the gauge I have the compressor set up to about 30 psi you can see there and so now I'm going to go ahead and press the trigger so this right here and let's see where the pressure drops off to <clears throat> so we're right around 13 psi of continuous pressure. So when I let it off, it'll automatically fill up again and go all the way up to 30, where it will pretty much, you know, stabilize. There you go, it's going up. So I rendered this a complete success because I mean I have it set up to 30 psi but you don't really have to have it set up that way because obviously I have a trigger here and so I can actually have it set up so that when I'm pressing the trigger I get a continuous flow of let's say 20 psi so um, you know this is, is pretty versatile but the the main thing the the main takeaway from all of this from this whole project is that no matter what, if I have my compressor hooked up to the bottle, I will continuously have my bottle filled with pressure so that I can continuously hold this button and constantly have air pressure without me having to pump, pump, pump. One more thing I want to address. So I took the, the actual plunger set up apart uh, because I was thinking that, you know, there has to be some type of lubrication inside this tube, you know, because you're going to be, you know, plungering up and down constantly. So it has to have some type of lubricant. And sure enough, when I took it apart, I was right. Inside this tube, there was some type of silicone or uh, some type of Vaseline type. It was clear and it was filled, you know, it had, it had it all along the walls and then all along this and even... Uh, on the bottom here, there's this little um, flap that goes right on the bottom. That had silicone as well. So, or, or, you know, whatever it was, Vaseline or whatever. So I would suggest before putting in your fluid, which in this case, the one gallon is going to be used for my differential. So I'm going to be using my, um, you know, fluid there. So to do my maintenance. I would suggest you clean it up, you know, and it comes off easily with just degreaser. 
So I just use a toothbrush to get all in the nooks and crannies and for the tube itself, I use one of these uh, dish type of brushes. So I just kind of, you know, sprayed it down and just uh, cleaned the inside and cleaned this up. That way I can ensure that I don't cross contaminate whatever that was with my gear oil or in the case of doing my transmission, we definitely don't want to cross contaminate with the transmission fluid. So, you know, do yourself a favor and take that extra step to take this apart and just clean these parts up and put it back together with the grease or the oil that you're intending to use with the, um, with the bottle. In this case, I will lube everything up the inside of this and this here. And then I would also lube this up with my gear oil because that's what I plan on using with this. And as far as the transmission one, the, the, the bottle for the, for the transmission, I will lube everything up with the transmission fluid. So just want to put that out there. Well, there you have it. My fluid transfer pump idea actually worked as far as pressurizing the system with my compressor and with the use of a tire air pressure gauge gun type setup. This makes my life a whole lot easier because now I don't have to worry about, you know, putting this in my one quart bottles and pumping away. I don't have to do that anymore. You know, even, you know, with the transmission or the differential, because that's the whole reason why I created two of these. This one, the small one is for the differential. Differential holds about two and a half to three quarts. I can put it all in there and just pressurize the system, pull the trigger, get it all in there in one go. And when it starts to flow out, take the tube out, put the plug back in, service is done. For the transmission now, the transmission that I have in my Nova, the 6L80, holds about 11 quarts. This big one here is the biggest one I can find, and well, it holds eight quarts. So, you know, pretty much I can do almost an entire flush with just one go uh, by pouring in eight quarts of fluid. Obviously, because if I want to do a complete flush, I need to add 11 quarts of fluid so that I can flush it all out, get some new fluid in. I would have to be doing it in two goes, but that is a hell of a lot better than doing 11 quarts with this guy. No way. That's why I created it. And now I can just pressurize it, keep it pressurized and just kind of let it flow. Just hold the trigger and just sit back and relax as the fluid is entering in whatever I want it to enter in, which in this case, it would be uh, the differential or the transmission. For the transmission, eight quarts of fluid is a lot of fluid. And this is just gonna make my life a whole lot easier. So I hope you guys enjoyed with tagging along as I created it, tested it out. I hope this helps someone out there because this definitely is gonna make my life easier. And I know it'll make you, our guys, life a little bit easier if you hate using those little tiny pumps. So hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Also, don't forget that notification bell so that when I upload a video, you'll get notified. And of course, hit the like button so that, you know, you guys let me know if I'm doing a good job. It also helps out the channel. And uh, down in the description box below, you can find a link to my Instagram page if you want to hit me up, say hi, or just check out my, my photos. You can follow me there. Well, as always, hope you guys enjoyed tagging along as I did this. And as always, thank you very much for watching.